morning, Nan. Good morning. We're so glad you joined us here this morning. My name is Jonathan Britton. I'm one of the elders here. We exist to know Jesus, to grow together, and to show his love. We are also part of the Christian and Missionary Alliance, which holds to the fourfold gospels, which signifies Jesus as our Savior, our healer, our sanctifier, and our coming King. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we owe you great thanks for many things. For the beauties of visible creation, for the provision of daily sustenance, for the wonders of gracious redemption, for the glory of your all-worthy Son, but not least that in you we have one whom we may properly and joyfully thank. How dreary it must be for those who are surrounded by these blessings, yet have their enjoyment of them short-circuited by lacking the ability to complete the cycle of enjoyment by returning thanks to you. May we be granted to introduce them to you and to all that is yours to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let us sing songs of praise. In Psalm 95, O oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. And this week, um, I follow a, a site on Facebook called Desiring God, which is uh, John Piper's um, ministry. And uh, he had on his Facebook this, the, the perfect thing for today. He said, when you gather in congregational worship this Sunday, remember, small or large, you are not just individual worshipers. You are a manifestation, a foretaste, a rehearsal of the end for which God made the world. Amen, right? So let us stand if you're able, and let's join our voices and our hearts in singing praise to Jesus.
your word is faithful, mighty in power. God will deliver me. Of this I'm sure, of this I'm sure. Me. 
free, oh, it's free and deep. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. You may be seated. This time we will take our tithes and offerings. There is ways to give online, communitychapel.org backslash giving. But we will also take an offering here, so at this time we will take our tithes and offerings. Thank you, Jen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, you are the, the master, the savior of everything, Lord. We are thankful for your many blessings, how many blessings you share with us. Lord, we thank you for all of them, and Lord, we now return a small portion of them to you. Use them to further your kingdom and to bring glory to your name. We pray these things in your name. Amen. At this time, turn to somebody and say, Happy Thanksgiving week. I love the vast array that shows up. Well, we're going to start by having a scripture reading, and uh, we're going to do this antiphonally. So if, uh, um, as you see it come up, you'll see some of the scriptures marked with an R. That's for those of you who are on the right side of the sanctuary, and the others, did I do that right? Okay. And then the L's are for those of you on this side of the sanctuary. But the first begins with us reading in unison, so can we get that up? All right, let's begin. And God saw the, all he had made, and it was very good.
So if uh, your friends ask you, what did you do at church today? Just tell them, we did an antiphonal reading. And that probably won't impress them at all. But anyway, there you go. Let's bow together in prayer. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let us give thanks to the Lord. For the good world, for things great and small, things beautiful and awesome, for seen and unseen splendors, we thank you, God. For human life, for talking and sharing and thinking together, for common hopes and hardships shared from birth until dying, we thank you, God. For work to do and strength to work, for community life, for exchanges of good humor and encouragement, we thank you, God. For family life, for life together, for family pleasures and amusements, for mutual forgiveness and burden shared, we thank you, God. For children and young people, for their energy, curiosity, their faith and wonder, for their optimism and high hopes, we thank you, God. For growing old and growing up, for wisdom deepened by experience, for rest and leisure, for time made more precious by its passing, we thank you, God for your help in times of doubt and sorrow, for your promise to heal our diseases, for preserving us in temptation and danger, we thank you, God. For the amazing grace of Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit, we thank you, God, and we praise your wonderful name. Amen. Many years ago, my friend and at that time boss, Reverend Richard Bush, shared an idea with me. He said, in his church in New Jersey, they did this thing called Symbols of Thankfulness, and he described it to me, and I said, well, that sounds like something interesting, and I'm always willing to try something new. Well, it, it caught on. It stuck like glue to this church, and I could imagine if some year I said the Sunday before Thanksgiving we weren't going to do th Symbols of Thankfulness, uh, there might be a rebellion that I'd have to quell, or I wouldn't quell it. I'd just give in to it and say, yeah, you're right. We should have that. It's a tradition, and it's a nice tradition. It's a way that you all can stand up and, and share with this group your thankfulness, your gratefulness for what the Lord has done for you. A couple of, uh, uh, well, one announcement in particular, we will not have Kids Club today because this service is, is of a, such a nature that I think the children could enjoy being here, being part of it. So and it gives uh, my dear wife a Sunday off as well. So um, let's, let's start together. Now, how this works is I pick up an item. So I'm, I'm the MC or the evil genius or whatever you want to call me. Well, not genius. Um, uh, I'm sorry? Okay. Anyway, so I, I'll pick up the item. When you see your item picked up, then come forward. Let's talk talk into the microphone so everybody can hear you clearly. And uh, we just are going to have a great time together of hearing about God's faithfulness. Right off the bat, I'm curious about this one. And I, I said to, oh, it's Lucas. He's coming down. Um, I said to Alan, I hope they didn't steal your bow. And he didn't. This is Lucas's bow. Sure. Yeah, feel free. If you brought something and you forgot to get it up here, um, feel free to come up and drop it off. Even if it's just a space holder that, that you can use to have an opportunity to share. Lucas. I'm grateful for my great-grandfather's cello bow because when I was four, he started to teach me how to play. When I was in fifth grade, I thought it was a no-brainer that I would play the cello in honor of my great-grandfather. This made me fall in love with music. I could not use his cello at first because it was a, I was a half-size cello, not a full size. I am now 13, almost 14, and I am finally, finally the right height to use the cello. I tried out for the chamber orchestra with his cello and made it. Ever since I started using his cello, I have felt him with me during orchestra class every day. Thank you. Now, Lucas, the bad news for you is your secret's out. <laughs> and I think a cello is a wonderful addition to the worship team, and I'm sure Jen would agree. So. Clementine, suitable for eating, I assume. Nobody's claiming the Clementine? Oh, here it comes time. Okay.
So the scripture this morning just really hit home. We are so blessed. We are given so much. Um, this year I've had the privilege of helping out at the Waterbury Food Bank, one of them. And um, God has just reminded me just how blessed and how grateful I need to be for all he has given us. We always have, a, I assume everybody here always has food on their plate. They have food to go to. They have a pantry with extras where so many people have so little. So um, I encourage you, give to your food banks in your towns and the one here. But anyway, I am so grateful for food. It's Harold, so I assume he actually knows how to use it, more than just throwing it across the garage, which is how I use it. <laughs> Morning. A tool, clearly. I'm grateful for and thankful for all the tools that the Lord has given me, given us, to be his hands and feet, and the people he's blessed me with, I'm thankful for, for, oh, sorry, and the people that he's blessed me with being around that are also God's tools, hand and feet, that he gives us what we need, and it's whether it's up to us to use it or not, and I'm thankful that he's given me so many tools in physical and in human. This isn't John? Oh, okay. Oh, it's Sherry. Okay. Cool. Oh, it's you. Okay, um, the kids both brought instruments um, that they were grateful for because um, since we moved in with Cheryl and Harold, their grandparents, um, every Saturday is jumping for Jesus. And they have instruments and they run around and they play their instruments and they worship, they worship God. So that's what um, Grace picked last night and Billy picked last night. And um, while I'm up here, I brought the garage opener um, because Sherry and Harold opened their home to me. And I'm just grateful that I have a home to go to now, a warm place for me and my kids, um, nice hot meals, you know, all the small things. Um, being in a situation where I had nothing, it's before it was hard to notice what uh, the small things you're grateful for are. And now, I definitely recognize them, and if it wasn't for Sherry and Harold bringing me here to Connecticut and letting me stay with them, I wouldn't have found my salvation in Jesus. So. Well, I could go home happy now, but we got lots more to do. Bugs Bunny, a.k.a. Alan Johnson. <laughs> i got to follow that one. Great. Uh, <clears throat> carrots, right? Uh, these are from the garden, which is over in that area over there. In, on our, and every year it's like, what do I pick out of the things that I'm thankful for, right? Because 
even the, you know little things like these beautiful November sunsets and bigger things like family. But this year I decided I'd, I would, um, I'm very thankful for having this garden. And we can see a theme, right, from, from your scripture readings. Um, God was very much about food and feeding people. And that's an opportunity that, we can, that, that I think we can feed people. And this year, um, you know, I'm just using Teen Challenge as kind of the place for this stuff to go, other than what we share amongst ourselves. Uh, just the, the, the fact that we can change our mindset about what food actually is and how healing it is if it's good food, um, these are important things. So I'm, I'm super thankful for that God put us in this property that we can do so much with. And I'm really excited about it and thankful. And uh, just as an aside, there are 20 of these here today. That's a one pound each. So make sure you take some. And there's 13 pounds. We'll go up to Teen Challenge on Monday. Who can resist a picture of grandbabies? Good morning, church family. I am thankful for family. I'm thankful for all of you, but I am thankful for my personal family. I'm thankful for my husband, who really is a wonderful head of our household. He's a great dad, and now he's a really fun grandpa. And I'm thankful for my grandchildren. We added another one this year, Connor. So we have Isabel, Owen, and Connor. And it's just fun because at the end of the day, you can send them home. You don't have that, all that responsibility. <laughs> and we can just enjoy them. So thank you. <laughs> So, Debbie, you fill them with sugar, spoil them, and send them home, right? There you go. Woo! That's what I'm looking forward to. Somebody's uh, card with their thankfulness for their three sons? That's Dan. Okay, great. I have three boys, and Jeff, Eric, and Tim Schult, which when we've had a Schult here, Jeff Schultz speaking, I forgot to go up and tell him my name was Schultz <laughs> and that I had a Jeff. Um, but I'm very grateful to have my sons uh, since my husband passed a year or so ago. They have done everything for me. They can't, they can't do enough for me, and I'm just so grateful. They're, they're fine men. And um, one of them knows the Lord, two of them don't, but they're on their way. Thank you. Somebody's fork. It's Sherry's fork. No, you don't have to hurry up here. It's just, you can, there you go, stroll. <laughs> We're relaxed. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. So I brought a fork because, um, oh, there's so much to be thankful for, but one of the things I'm really thankful for is having my sons and his family, well, my son's family, um, at dinner again and having our meals have gotten fun and Sunday dinner's gotten fun again and I'm thankful. The tiny little cross. Thank you. Morning. Um, so firstly, I'd like to say um, I'm very thankful to my mom uh, for raising me in a Christian home. Um, and everyone in this church who has impacted my life in one way or another. Um, so I brought up this cross um, 
This is actually um, a gift from one of my students um, who I see every morning in morning care. And um, I've been doing morning care. This is my second year doing it. Um, and she came up to me and she's like, Miss Anderson, I really, really have to tell you something. And I'm like, okay, what, what do you want to tell me? She goes, we were talking about examples of Jesus in class yesterday and we could give a cross to whoever reminded us of the kindness of Jesus. And you came to my mind. <laughs> um, so I'm very thankful for my students and for Jesus and all that he's done for my life. Golf drops. Who isn't thankful for golf drops, am I right? <laughs> I, I, I never knew. But there's two of them, so I wonder if there's some significance there. there is. <laughs> After I had my heart surgery, one of the medications that I take uh, is, um, makes me cough. And that's not what this is about, though. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have two new grandchildren, as you know, uh, like these. They're different. One is cherry and one is lemon flavored you know they're they're different they're not identical but uh, they're loved and I'm trying to remember everything I was going to say but I've listened to everybody else here this morning <laughs> I can't think of it but no there's they're sugarless but they're sweet um, there's um, they probably make me more more socially acceptable just like these cough drops do for so I don't cough through the whole service. Um, but most of all, I, I'm grateful for the symbol of these um, as, as your prayers and God's faithfulness. Thank you so much. A little update. Uh, there, after 157 days uh, in the... Uh, Neo unit. They're both home. Um, they're actually doing quite well. Um, the Evie, who is in there the longest, is, um, is socially behind her brother, but she's catching up pretty quickly. Uh, they are all seem to be doing very, very well. And um, it actually, Evie had, the, with the meningitis he had at an extremely young age, uh, even before he was supposed to be born, um, is another way of God showed his blessings on, on them and their family. Thank you. Boy, and that's a tribute to God's grace because there were, Alan, there was quite a period of time where we, we didn't know they were going to survive. And God has been gracious. And so thank you for sharing that. That's great. Oh, I've gotten some of those myself. So these are pumpkins made out of little fingerprints. <laughs> and um, I met the Bennetts. They were sitting behind me when we used to have seats over here. And I would talk to Tara. Um, you know, at, at the end of church, we, you know, just to meet her and be friendly and whatever. <coughs> Alan started coughing, talking about cough drops and I got a frog in my throat. Anyway, um, we were talking one day and she said, you know, Steve's family was from the Midwest and her family was up in Maine and they'd been locked in with COVID. And I thought, here's a young woman in our midst who has like no they had just moved here. I mean, she's, it was kind of lonely, it seemed to me. And she lived down the street, and Hopbrook Park was right in between us. And it was still, it was like the fall of 21, or maybe the summer of 21. And we said, well, let's walk at Hopbrook Park. And so Sien is on this little tricycle. Tara's got a big handle because Sien was two. 
And we started walking that big hill all the way down to the end of Hopbrook Park and looped around. And it's good because it's a little bit of a hill and it's a mile and a half and it's just a, a good walk. And we started talking. And, um, and, you know, I thought to myself, well, you know, Tara needs some companionship. Well, I needed companionship. My family was sort of falling apart right then. And it was just so great for both of us. And it's just a testament to how God brings people together at the right time in your life when you really need them. And then CN just being adorable. And I would bring my son's little Yorkie, who was like 16 pounds, and CN just got the biggest kick out of her. And Buffy would walk right alongside her tricycle. And it just, the whole thing was just a wonderful friendship. And we talk so much. And I just, you know, at the time that I was losing a son, I was gaining a daughter. And I was gaining a granddaughter. And so last October, I got these little fingerprints, and they have been in a very prominent place on my refrigerator with a magnet ever since, because this is a grandma gift, you know? And so, and, and all that walking, I didn't know at the time that my heart was going downhill, and the doctor said to me, you know, walking and exercise is just as important for you and just as healing to your heart as any of the medications I'm giving you. So... Just that walk once a week, sometimes twice a week, it healed my spiritual heart. It was helping my physical heart. It was just a wonderful bringing together of God and family, and I'm thankful for that. These look like they're going to be a fun snack. They are a fun snack. Already? Yes. Well, if you can get them out of the jar. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get them out of the jar. So, yeah. Hi, church. Hi. This makes people feel short, you know. <laughs> Even if we are short. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Anyway, I... Um, I can't remember how it's going to start. Okay, but anyway... Um, I do not come, look at this, hi Art, I, I do not come by, um, I seem gregarious, and I am, but I don't come by um, community as God would have us have community naturally. And I was going to tell a story about my grandfather, but I didn't want to shed an ugly light. I'm going to tell the story anyway. My grandfather was a wonderful man. Um, my mom has been telling me stories. She lies down on their couch. She's very tired by the end of the day. And she just kind of goes on and on and on and on and on about her childhood. The same stories, pretty much, as some of you who have elderly parents know. Um, she told me about my grandfather. He, um, he was a very good man. But they had a porch on the front of their house, and the neighbors would go by, and people would gather, and <laughs> he didn't want that. He moved his porch to the back. <laughs> I, thought, I find that kind of amusing, but at the same time, I, I, I feel sad for them. And um, that seems to be my way, and especially when I was teaching, I would pull in um, a lot. And over the last couple years, because, I, um, because of my own um, irresponsibility, um, had a couple of pretty significant injuries and um, was kind of not able to do anything. And last night I wrote a big list of all the people in this church that I am grateful for. I'm not going to go through those because we'd be here till like dinner time. Um, but uh, I, you know, even at, at you know, you, at any age, you can learn so much, and um, especially over the last couple of years. <laughs> I am grateful for the community of Community Chapel. I am grateful for the people who give without being asked, who pray at a drop of a hat, who are right there, you know you can turn to them at any time, who drop by your house with gifts like, you know, CBD and tens, 
uh, machines and things like that, I don't know if those people are here, who help out with mamas, who are prayer partners, who buy sauerkraut for you. Um, so many good people here, so much good community, and I am so grateful. And, oh, what this is? Um, well, you know, the Harvest Fair had all those pumpkins, and, um, you know, we, we just got to have less... We didn't have to pay so much for the pumpkins afterwards. And so this is just kind of a place keeper. But, you know, George and Carol have done so much for our church and so much for me. Um, and that's where these came from. I took, I, I bought a bunch of the pumpkins and I uh, have turned them into puree, which will be eaten throughout the winter. And these two. So this is just symbolic. Thank you, church. You're teaching me so much. I'm grateful for it. Found your keys. Thank you. <laughs> so every year, the week before this service, I start thinking about it, and uh, as usual, I'm usually going 100 miles an hour, and I think, you know, I'll just, you know, I'm thankful for stuff, but this year I'll skip it and let everyone else do it. And then the guy and the Lord, of course, when I get here, says, "No, you, you, <laughs> you have a plethora of stuff to be thankful." share something so my keys always go up there it's not the keys but actually um i have three things i'm thankful for and uh, i'll make it brief but i figure as an elder i'll take advantage of three things so the first the first thing is i'm grateful that my son jeremy is still here because uh, six years ago, December 7th, it was the Platt family day of infamy, he went to the doctor and our world was turned upside down. He had eight rounds of chemo, half a lung removed, uh, mass in his abdomen, and uh, he struggles now because of that. And uh, I don't blame him because we sat there after he had four rounds of chemo and he was gonna go for high dose, we sat there thinking the high dose so that was that was it and the doctor said pretty matter of factly to us he says well you, you got about a 50 50 chance so that's one thing i'm thankful for the, the second is cardiologists i wasn't feeling good this summer and uh i went and found out i had afib they went in a vein zapped my heart and now i have no afib uh, take a pill to keep my pulse down. So that's two. The third one is uh, my wife of 40 years put up with me for 43 years. Um, the Lord found the perfect woman for me. There's, I, I definitely married up. Um, Three things that come to mind, I've shared them all before, is uh, when the boys and I would go skiing, she didn't ski, she tried it once, and she had a, I've never seen a bruise bigger than, I, I think she had the world record bruise, but she would stand at the bottom of the hill waiting for us, and she, she almost had frostbite. I said, go inside, well, you know, we know you, <laughs> you want to. Um, the second is 31 years on the railroad. Uh, I used to have this blue soft-sided cooler and I had many of them because I'd wear them out but just about every day for 31 years she would fill that with just all kind of stuff for lunch and I I was the envy of all my guys because they ordered out or didn't eat so uh, what was the third thing there's more than three things but uh, uh, oh uh, she makes me the, you know, the best salad every night. It's like this big. I take pictures and put it on Facebook, so you can go on there. 
You can go on there and see it. John Pham knows that. Uh, so, like I said, I went in the Navy. I went from here to Florida. She was all over the country. Her, her dad was in the Navy and ended up in Florida. And, you know, it was just by, you know, it was 300 million people in this country, and we met, and I dragged her up here. I lied, there's four things here. No. I, I've been in this church now almost 30 years, and we came together in this church. Uh, the Floyd and Joan Lundy, we had so many prayer people that were praying over us, and this is our family. This is our family, and uh, we, just, we thank God for this place. Uh, we thank God that we're all on level ground. We all gather on the cross and worship the same Jesus, even though we have all kind of disagreements and whatever we, we go forward. And uh, okay, those, those are the four things. So thank you. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a placeholder because I was kind of like art. Um, I think I come up here all the time. I'm very long-winded, too, so sometimes I'm like, well, I got a lot of ideas. Um, so I could go on forever. Um, I brought this bag, though, because um, my friend made this bag for me. This was part of her bridesmaid present. That's making me cry, so that's weird. Um, but I'm kind of grateful for, I'm also going to, say a couple things I'm grateful for. They're a little bit interconnected at some points. Um, two things, I'm grateful for um, music and singing and I'm grateful for relationships and in general. And um, so with singing, if you know me, you know that I never shut up. I don't stop singing. I can sing you the entire soundtrack to Phantom of the Opera without taking too many breaths. And it's, uh, I'll do the voices, too. Um, but when I was a kid, and I have proof of this, I wasn't very good at singing. Um, I, I like to make a lot of noise, but I wasn't very good at it. But it's the one thing that I've kind of asked God for my whole life. And um, it brings me relationships with people. My best friend, who made this bag for me, who got married this year. Why am I crying? <laughs> Who's been my best friend for... Oh man, I feel old, like 13 years now. Um, no, I know, it's weird, it's, I know. For some of you, you're like, what? Okay, anyways, um, but we became best friends because we sing together, and we still sing together. Um, and then I get to sing here in church, which is amazing, with an accordion and a cello someday, soon in the near future, Lucas. And, um, and just with so many talented people. And then um, I get to sing with my dad and my brother, which is probably the true joy of my life. Um, we're singing at, at good old days on Wednesday. It's, it's just so amazing. It's an experience that I'm so grateful for. But I'm also grateful for these relationships that I get to have with um, my friend Marissa, who doesn't know the Lord, but um, she says that she's grateful that I do. Um, because it's a different perspective than she has. One of these days, she will. Um, but also, um, I'm grateful for this woman that came into our family, who I wish was here today, um, my brother's girlfriend, Katie, who's a huge part in restoring my relationship with my brother. Um, And obviously my relationship with my parents is really special. And a lot, a lot of my friends don't have what I have. Um, so I'm aware of that all the time, that I can always go to my mom. She's always been my, my best friend. And, and just the wisdom I get from my dad and the humor. Um, but also the, the relationships that I have here. Um, I spend time with Denise, and she's been a true mentor to me. To me. Sorry. 
I'm worse than both of you this year, so. But, um, you know, uh, and then also my friend Sherry, who I get to meet with on Mondays, um, and hearing her perspective, hearing both perspectives, just about how we love God. And, um, and then the real, I, would, I was about to say the icing on the cake, but it's, it's kind of everything, isn't it? It's not just the icing, but we get to have a relationship with God. Which is like, no other religion gets that. God wants that. that. That's the core of it all. I think that was like the first thing that Sherry ever said to me when I met her was like, you know, she's like, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. And I was like, oh yeah. And it's something that I need to maintain and work with. Yeah, relationship. So, man, there's so much to be grateful for because God wants that from us. And he wants us to tell him everything. I used to tell my best friend when, he, when I was a kid um, to yell at God sometimes because he was really angry. And I was like, then you're talking to God at least. He can take it. God can take everything that you have. Every burden that we have, he takes. And all the joy that we have, he multiplies. And if that's not something to be grateful for, then... Nothing is. So thank you, church, also, for this family and the relationships that we have here, that that's, that's what we grow. Um, and I'm going to do a little plug that, that Dad meant to do before, which is um, we are going to be doing some garlic cloving in the back. If anybody wants to stick around at the end of church, we're going to be cloving those garlics. And weather permitting, I don't know, if it's too windy or whatever, we're going to be going back there and doing some work in the garden if you want to join us. I know if you didn't bring change of clothes, that might be hard. But glo- clothing is just breaking them apart. So, all right. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we need help. We need the help. And garlic is good and healing. So, And something that I don't know if you heard him say, but he's bringing up, we, we went through 23 pounds of carrots, 33 so there's 20 pounds back there, and then there's, um, I know, math. Then there's 13 that are going to, that's going to Teen Challenge. So um, thank you. Oh, wow, there's a lot more than I thought there was. All right. Um, so my necklace, I have two things I'm thankful for with it. One is the cross itself, which reminds me of the ultimate sacrifice that was made for us. And the second is the necklace itself, because not many know, but I'm not going to get too into it, because it's a little, you know, you don't need to worry about that. But um, it was my brother's for a long time, since I don't even know when probably since he was born, just had it. But, um, he gave it to me for well, the rest of my life now, because you know, he got his own. But um, he gave it to me when he went away for a little bit. I won't say where, but some of you can probably guess where. You know, behind bars. <laughs> but, um, but it reminded me that the Lord was with him and is still with me too. Because, one, it, obviously no one likes to go to jail or prison. You know, it's not very fun. But it brought him back to us a greater man than he was before, which I'm very grateful for and thankful for as well. And, yeah, leave it at that. Cody, did you intend to leave the phone here? Oh, okay. All right. Samuel. Thank you. Thank you. I kind of need this phone to text my friends. Okay. <laughs> <I'm being good. laughs> yeah. All right. I was hoping to get it back from you. All right. Um, so thanks 
things I'm very thankful for is this September, September, September 4th, my brother got married to his lovely wife, Rachel. So we're going to be, um, what I'm thankful for is that we're going to spend some time on Thanksgiving, eating with them, having fun. So we get to, you know, I, yeah. Um, I don't see my brother that much anymore, so. But we do play some video games together, so that is the way we connect. But it'll be nice seeing him at Thanksgiving and seeing the family, so thank you. Oh, should I have waited on this one? All right, because you have another one. Well, there's still another one. Did you want to save the other one till last? Okay. Hi, guys. Yeah, that is hi. <laughs> um, this is a paint pot, not one that we've been using here. Um, okay, sorry. Um, it's a paint pot that my sister actually brought to the house yesterday, and when we were coming here, I said, oh, I've got to bring it to church just to drop it off. And then afterwards, I said, you know what? This is really something that I'm super thankful for. I had a vision or a hope and desire to um, start painting the church this fall. And with so much help and Mr. Brother Art over here, it is completed and I am just totally amazed and so thankful for all of you who pitched in to help and clean it up and it just looks so pretty and I just want to thank you all for all your help. And thank you Pam for the many hours you put in on that project. You were here, oh my stars. Pam was here more than I was during that project so. Um, um, but, um, and you decorated the church for Christmas because we have the red and now we have the green. So, it's, <laughs> Denise? Good morning, church. <laughs> I think the thing I'm most grateful for, and I'm sure you are also, is, um, is my Bible. I spend so much time with it and I've grown so fond of it. And I just didn't want this to end without <laughs> saying that to you, that um, my Bible is, is the thing I'm most grateful for. But next to that, my family and my family here are the next things I'm most grateful for. And I wasn't going to get up, but a while back, um, we were going to go on retreat, the woman in our parish, before we went to, to the COVID hit and hit it down. And we were going to do the names of God. So we've got all these bookmarks <laughs> so I'm going to put them on the table back there and um, on the front table so you can pick one up because a long time ago people said to me or one of my mentors said you should really learn the these are the names of God in the Old Testament it's the names of God but anyway <laughs> there's another stack that are names of Jesus in the New Testament but anyway these are the names of God and my mentor said you should really learn those names of God and understand what each one means so it's, you know, Elohim, Adonai, El Elyon. I won't go into every single one of them, but I did memorize every one of them and what it meant. And it's meant a lot to me and my growth with Christ. So I would suggest maybe you do the same. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> phone is a great way to connect. Um, my husband started uh, two years ago doing Mission 119, which they read a Bible passage and then Pastor Soper expounds on it. So we went all the way through the 90 weeks and we're week 20 in the second time. And anybody who's really read the Bible when you go through again, there are things you don't remember hearing. Um, so it's it's been wonderful. It's something we do together every morning. Uh, so that really 
um, keeps us in the word there besides any other studies we do. Um, grateful for the Bible, um, the, yeah, grateful for the Bible, of course, but um, the church, we have um, prayer threads, we have ladies, and then we have individual ones that we really can connect with, which is awesome when somebody has an immediate prayer, you can put it on there, and then we listen and get answered prayers, and um, we are so blessed to be able to do this. The technology can be wonderful uh, when we use it properly, um, because it, we lift one another up. I remember back when Jeremy was diagnosed with cancer six years ago, December 7th, um, I immediately started to some of the ladies and asking for prayer and all the chemo and just everything going on. Um, it's, it's a wonderful way to stay connected um, with many people that we couldn't do otherwise just making a phone call. And sometimes you're too emotional to speak, so that it's been wonderful. Well, before we conclude this time, I just want to make it available to you if you'd like to. I saw Steve's hand already come up. So if you'd like to, to share something, you, you didn't bring a symbol, but you would still like to share something. Uh, it sounds like the, the Bennett family's coming, so we're grateful for that. But if, if you would like to share something just uh, after they're done, just slip up your hand. We really weren't too sure if we we're going to come up here or not up until the middle of this church service. But. You want to? We want to start by saying we are just so thankful for this church family. And Steve's going to read my notes because I won't get through this. So. <laughs> it's, it's such a wonderful holiday of, of all holidays to give thanks to Yahweh and for our salvation, for, for heaven and for our families, our immediate families, our extended families, for all the wonderful things, people from uh, extended families up north, you guys here, church families. Um, it's a great holiday to give thanks for all the things we hold dear in our hearts we may or may not say or, or show and uh, display uh, family and, you know, extended family to come down to see us. <laughs> um, Tara wrote this up uh, at home before we came here. Uh, just uh, she's thinking about it for a little while and decided to write up. So um, see if we both make it through it. Um, I'm happy for this church family. Two years ago, Steve and I, Tara and I, we're searching, what's that? We're searching for a church to call home. After visiting several, I inquired on Facebook uh, network page for recommendations. This church in this area, we're, we received quite a few responses, but one that caught our eye and simply said, the community church, the community chapel in Oxford. Sorry, I could, if I could shake this off a little bit, I might be able to read a little better. I swear I could read, I'm pretty good at reading. <laughs> So Steve and I decided to check out Community Chapel on our first Sunday, and we walked through into the front doors with a 10-month-old baby in our arms in a diaper bag, not knowing what to expect. That Sunday, we sang, and he could have called 10,000 angels. I knew in that moment that we were at home. After coming to Community Chapel for three or four weeks, a world as we knew it came to a screeching halt. Um, as we found ourselves in the midst of a pandemic, we could not begin to imagine that our world would be so different in so few months that we'd be able to, um, well over a year, would be not be able to return back to church and community chapel. We continue watching online, thankfully, we just, you know, tune in from our home, <coughs> from church, um, to watch church from our home on our couch and like sit down with, with Sienna and, and play, we watch and sing along. I think, uh, great thanks for the singing and people in the choir and being able to give thanks. Such a good way to praise God and live like the mean potatoes of coming in church, among other things, to come up and speak and, you know, and delve into your, your, your Bible and passages, but really giving thanks and standing. It's like singing and dancing. So much energy and passion. Um, during that time, we continued in joining to our fellowship through uh, live streams, and we're incredibly thankful to be able to do so. But it wasn't in the same as being here, of course. We feel like we have... Uh, at a loss. 
Christmas time came around, and we got a text from Gina that she and R had something to drop off at our house. So they pulled into our driveway, you know, the whole thing like, hey, stand off, I'm not too sure if I can come by, you know, like, can you throw it out the door as you're driving by, <laughs> just leave in the mailbox. She's like, Steve, go out there, go, 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 go say hi, you know, so I'm like, went down to the driveway. Um, and uh, it was a, a small bag, a small Christmas bag, and the Christmas bag had our family's name on it. And it, I couldn't believe it, but after this time, we had the, uh, that we've been remembered after, you know, not being a church. We've been fortunate enough to meet uh, with a few of her at first, and you know, it's come to know each other's names and to uh, attend get-togethers at the beginning of the year. But it's such a shining act of faithfulness to check in on us. Uh, and after those few months and months have passed by, this Christmas bag with our name on it just blew Tara and us away. Um, this most precious gift, this is Tara's most precious gift that we've received all year. Uh, it would be another six months before we were able to return to church in person. And what we did, we, with, now with a toddler in tow, and um, since then we've had so many blessings, and know so many of you come closer through acts of works and service, um, and those of you that welcome us into your hearts and into your homes. Uh, this church service is also incredibly special, as we are very thankful for this church and for thankful for all of you. Uh, and for the Christmas bag, and for all of the kind of really small things show a bigger purpose. Thank you. That, that by the way, is the, uh, is the, uh, the, the pumpkin painter that we heard from earlier. She's got a wicked good painting thumb. So. Anybody else have something they'd like to share? We are very grateful for this whole congregation and uh, how much you have opened your arms to our daughter. Connie and I are the parents from Maine, and we're going home tomorrow. <laughs> But uh, we're just extremely grateful for the way you've received uh, Tara and Steve and CN, and that means a lot to us since we live so far away. And we just thank the Lord that uh, they're here in a, uh, in a Bible-believing church where Jesus is the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to see you all the way down from Maine. Always a pleasure to see you. Anyone else? If not, then I'm going to ask the worship team to come on back up, and we're going to we have a closing hymn. Oh, yes, we're doing that first. I'm sorry. It's the most wonderful time. How'd I do with that? Yeah, I'm glad he's singing and not me. <laughs> Actually, you're glad he's singing and not me. Um, so... <laughs> Um, this is our um, time that um, we do our prison fellowship ministry. And basically what it is is we partner with prison fellowship. And we buy Christmas gifts for prisoners' children on their behalf. And this is one wonderful way to spread God's love to people around that don't know us and that don't know, may not know the Lord. Um, there, I know there's many people who have come to know the Lord through prison fellowship ministry. So I do um, say that I would love for you to come and take an angel that's in the back and make sure that you pray for this family and the parents. Um, we don't always have the parents' name on here, but there's always the child's name. But just pray for them. And if you would, buy a Christmas gift. It does need to be wrapped when you bring it back, and it needs to be back by December 11th. When you take the gift, you'll be able to take this tag right off the back and stick the tag on the gift without the little bottom part that's saying everything. And then we will also do delivery for the Christmas gifts the set, uh, no, two Saturdays before Christmas on the 17th. Um, Christmas Eve would have been a little tough. So on the 17th, we'll be delivering. So if anybody would like to help deliver the Christmas gifts, it's local, basically Waterbury, Naugatuck, 
Torrington, not too, too far, but um, just would love some help. And um, I just thank you so much for many, many years. We've been doing this probably 28 years, 29 years. I have no idea. <laughs> but just pray for these folks and thank you so much for your ministry. And a big thanks to Pam and Gina who organize all these things, make the phone calls to the families to make sure we're getting the right gift for the kids. And, and I, I just would encourage you to, to grab hold of an angel. And also, if you have time on the 17th, deliver. Beth and I will be there helping you. And uh, it's a blessing. It's, a, it's just a blessing to be able to, to do something nice for people who really, really appreciate that. So now I think we'll have the worship team come up and we'll close with a final song. I don't know about you, but my heart is full. It's such a beautiful thing to be here. So we can stand. And one last chance to say thank you to God. Thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with gifts of love and still is ours today oh may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful Well, uh, just a few announcements before we're dismissed. There will not be a second hour class today. Uh, Dave and Sue are upstate New York. Uh, hopefully not <laughs> under several feet of snow. But um, anyway, we pray that they have a safe trip back home. Uh, just an update on the peak survey. We now have 30 of you who have completed the survey. So thank you for that. If you have not completed it yet, um, please uh, 
carve a half hour out of your life in the next seven days or eight days. It closes, yeah, it closes the 28th of uh, November. And so please take advantage of that. I think uh, those of us who have gone through it have been challenged and uh, hopefully gotten an idea of uh, some things that we can do as a church moving into the future. And when the surveys are all complete, then in January, we'll hear from the, um, the folks from the PEAK organization who will be processing the, the, uh, the, your answers. Uh, so just to know, just so you know, there'll be kind of a hit the pause button at, after November 28th that will be unpaused somewhere in mid-January. So just wanted to let you know that. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, this 22nd, this coming Tuesday, uh, there'll be a wreath-making, uh, do you call it a party? or Sure, a wreath-making party. Six o'clock, is that the start time? I believe so. Yes, yeah, six o'clock, right here. Um, so uh, if you'd like to make a wreath, and it's limited to how many people? 20. 20 people. It'll cost between 10 and $15, so go to the ATM on your way and make sure, you, or Venmo it, what, however you want to do it. Um, and then the following Tuesday, the 29th, will be, I, I have these two words together in my notes, decorating pizza. <laughs> so we'll be decorating the church getting all the wreaths out, getting the trees up, and there will be pizza involved. That's our, that's our incentive to get you to come. And also my wife notified me that there will obviously, because of the holiday, be no uh, ladies' Bible study this week. So please make note of that, um, and then I'll be back on track the next week. Dottie, you had an announcement? Okay, it should be put up. There we go. If anybody wants to order any Christmas gifts for um, a loved one, um, community chapel merchandise, I'm closing the orders on Tuesday because I need to place them on Wednesday to get them before Christmas. And that's probably the last time I'm going to order for the next six months. Just need a break. I've been doing a lot of ordering with them. Um, there is a jacket. It's a nice tech jacket. It's I would call it a light winter day, fall, um, spring. It's really, um, really nice. It's water resistant. Everything is embroidered. You'll see a men's button down shirt. Then you also see um, baseball hats there. We have them with the mesh back and we have them with more of a closed back, but they are adjustable, both of them. Um, my brother informed me that the mesh is summer and the closed is winter. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I don't really wear hats. And Maddie, I did get beanies on there. They didn't get on the mock-ups, but we have beanies also. And I think the prices are all up there. So um, just see me, if you can see me today. Um, earlier in the day, by Tuesday, if you place the, if you let me know, because I got to compile it and I want to get it off to them on Wednesday, so we'll get it back for Christmas. Okay, the next thing is December 9th, we are having the open house, um, Christmas open house. We expanded this year, so we will have St. Nicholas, we're going to have caroling, we're going to have a bonfire, weather permitting, a wagon ride, and we're going to ha have cookies and hot chocolate. Now with the cookies, I need some help. So if anybody can bake their favorite cookie that they like and bring it, um, if somebody wants to do a nut-free one, somebody wants to do gluten-free, that would be appreciated. We have started advertising this out and we've, more than last year, we've gotten more people inquire about it from outside. And I saw a couple people that said they were interested that actually came to the Harvest Fair. And they each had um, three children. Also, the printer that has done the merchandise for me is very interested and put it on her calendar, and she had been talking to a friend about it, too. So she was going to put it up in her shop. So I'm anticipating some more kids this year, and I'm, let's pray about that and that we can sow God's seed and give our love and show Christ's love through us, that we spread God's word, and they would start going to church, whether it's here or someplace else. Our job is to to plant the seed for God. 
Um, so it's a really joyous time. If everybody could come, that would be great. I felt last year we didn't have a lot of people from the outside, but it was our Christmas party. We all got together, we were laughing, and it was like so good after COVID. And you know, we had scares a spike of COVID last year, but it was just so much fun. And John Mealy helped make it a great event. He was joking with Santa and everybody really enjoyed it. And it's really a fun time. So if you have the time to come, last year we did it on a Sunday, it's on a Friday night. It's two hours. Oh, and I forgot, we are gonna do also kids games this year. So I knew there was something else I was missing. So there's gonna be a lot of fun this year. So if you can make it, we'd um, really like it. And with our warm smiles, welcome anybody from the outside. Um, expanding on the reef making, I do have a sign up list because we only have 20 spots. So if you're able to make it, um, I'd really appreciate you coming and enjoying in the festive. Art and George, I mean, Art. Alan and George are leading it. Um, they, they've asked if you can bring clippers if you have them to do this. These guys are pros in reef making. I don't know the amount. We're only charging the cost of the reef making. So anywhere from 10 to $20, please not everybody bring 20s because I, I won't have change probably for all of you. Um, but we can Venmo that if you Venmo, just put in the notes wreath. If you do Tithely, uh, don't do Tithely because I don't think we, I've talked to Jerry about setting something up. But if you Venmo, um, at least just put wreath in the notes, then they know where to put that money. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dottie, for all that you're doing. By the way, that was, that was actually a picture in that ad for the open house of our own Santa George. And, that, and we found out last year the man's a stand-up comic as well. So that was, that was fun to find out. So. I believe that's everything. Let's close in prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you for this beautiful day, for this time to be together with your people, to just be reminded in these individual stories of how faithful and good you are. You are a good, good father and you meet us. And we have to sometimes, we just really need to pay attention to what you're doing because you're doing good stuff. And we thank you for that. Now we pray your blessing on us as we go. In Jesus' name, amen.